So today, um, I'm going to be, and me and my group are going to be analyzing the adult data set. And Ben will take it from here. Yep. So, um, so here is our roadmap for our data sets. Um, and firstly, we did uh, data processing. And, um, and with, uh, first, we, we obtained the data set from the UCI machine learning res researchery. And um, they will, we then, we then up uploaded the, the set into a data frame. The 50K category was a uh, one shot encoded so that it, it could store numerical values. Finally, we separated the, the data set into a training and testing set. Sorry, I'm reading from my phone screen. I can't use my laptop right now and it's a little hard for me. Um, and second, we did the modeling and we implemented both a decision, decision tree model and the logistic regression of neural network for the data set since it was a classification problem. And, um, we also, uh, and then we did the evaluation. For our evaluation, we did a we use the metrics for entropy and accuracy to streamline our results. We will focus on accuracy as the basis of our evaluation. And then after, uh, and then after creating, training, and testing the model, the target value was classified at 79% accuracy with the decision tree and logistic regression performing at the same level. Uh, so now we have our data set. The data set, um, 48,842 instances and 14 attributes relating to an adult. Uh, our attributes uh, include age, education, occupation, um, and education number and race. Also, our target attribute is whether the income is over or under 40K. And we will be testing different features to reach an accurate prediction. So here's just the display for our data. As you can see, it has the different attributes. And this is before we one hot encoded the 50K and dropped some of the unnecessary values. So our first model was a decision tree. We tried to implement different features, but um, we found that education number, which are like the numbers of year in education, uh, provided the highest accuracy. Other features such as age and work hours created more expansive trees with lower accuracies. So right here on the left, you can see this is figure one, the decision tree based off of work hours per week. And it created a very large tree that didn't really prove too many branches, which resulted in lower accuracy. And to the right over here, we created a decision tree with education number. And as you can see, it's much more compact and it produced higher accuracy results. And as you can see, we used entropy as the measuring, as the loss value for this function, for this model. Our second model was a logistic regression neural network. Similar to a decision tree, we used, we used the same features, the education number of work hours per week and age. Um, since this model was a neural network, we also tried out different layers. So on the right over here, this is the basic format of our neural network. So first we normalized the input. And then after that, we had three dense layers. We, we played around with different dense layers, but we found that the dense layers actually didn't have too big of an impact on the results. Um, and we found that having three dense layers actually provided pretty solid results in, um, pretty solid results in terms of accuracy. So this graph over here to the left measures the accuracy of your data. And as you can see, it starts off very low and it steeply increases. And at around like 19-ish epoch, it starts to, it converges and it, it just stays completely stable. So at that point, we knew that there's like no way to increase that epoch because it completely flattened out. For loss, it all starts out high and then it dramatically decreases. And then it also begins to converge. And that was basically how we produced our logistic regression model. So for performance, so the feature one are the features are listed here. So in our training set for the decision tree, feature one got 
0.76 accuracy. Feature 2 got 0.76 as well, and Feature 3 got 0.78. For the decision tree, we didn't um, use the validation set. We just used the training and test set. And Feature 1 was 0.76 as well. Feature 2 was also 0.76, and Feature 3 was 0.79. And for logistic regression, um, the reason why there's different decimal points is because the logistic regression functions from TensorFlow provided more detail in its output. So Feature 1 had 0.7587, Feature 2 had the exact same value, and Feature 3 had 0.772. And as you can see, Feature 3 performed the best on both sides, and this trend stays the same through the validation and training set. So interestingly, before, um, so we created the models and then I we did some research to find if this data set had been analyzed online. And on GitHub, we found another uh, piece of code that actually analyzes the exact same data set. And they also use the logistic regression model and a decision tree. And as you can see, the accuracy came out very similar for both the logistic regression and decision tree and around 0.05 higher than our model. And so these plots, um, show some different uh, metrics for accuracy. So this is separation plot. Um, this compares precision and recall and F1 values cap values. So it just shows how the two compare. And as you can see, both um, seem to follow a similar pattern, except the logistic regression has a bit of a more smooth um, correlation between the values, while the decision tree is obviously a lot more uh, like well, it's a lot less smooth because it involves breakout for branches and not necessarily a regression model. And so both for conclusions, we found that both our models tied with a 79% accuracy rate for the test set, which we expected a bit higher, but I was honestly very surprised that both models produced the exact same accuracy. Uh, feature three proved to be the most accurate in terms of the target value um, compared to feature one and two, which proved nearly identically. Um, the outside source further proved that our models were very similar and that it's not a fluke in it's not necessarily a fluke in our testing, but rather the data set itself has a very similar correlation, um, regardless of what model we choose to use. And from this project, we learned that data, especially large sets, can create patterns and how um, these patterns can also sometimes make creating models a bit unpredictable since we don't know if sometimes one model might perform better or they might both perform the same. And out in certain sets, sometimes no model is the correct choice compared to the other. So yeah, that's our presentation.